When it comes to owning a drone, there are countless steps to be aware and on top of. One of which, which I think DJI could have been a little bit more specific about, is the IMU calibration. Flyaways are real, and it's really important to understand every factor that goes into reducing the possibility of a flyaway happening. In today's video, I will be showing you guys how to calibrate your IMU, as well as knowing what to look for and when to look for signs that require your attention. So stick around until the end of the video as I show you guys how to make your drone safer for you and the environment around you. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Make sure to subscribe and click on that notification bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video like this. For you guys who are already subscribed, did you know that 99 of you clicked on the notification bell but did not enable YouTube notifications? That is why you're not getting notified every time I upload a new video. Anyway, let's go ahead and make your drone one step safer. So the first thing that we need to address is making sure that you know the difference between your drone's compass and the IMU. While it is true that you should be calibrating your drone's compass before each and every flight, that is not the case for your IMU. Compass calibration on a drone is done to align the drone's flight system with the Earth's magnetic north. The IMU is a sensor that detects motion along a horizontal plane, as well as increases and decreases in altitude. Okay, I got it. So the compass should be calibrated before each and every flight. When should you calibrate your IMU? The first time you should calibrate your IMU is actually when you first receive your drone. That is because the drone is likely coming from China and has traveled a very long way in order to get to your house. This means that the drone hasn't flown in a very long time and is more susceptible to experiencing a flyaway. That is why I would recommend to calibrate the IMU as soon as you set up your drone fresh out of the box. And that brings me to the second point. Another time that you should be aware about your IMU being compromised is actually when you're traveling long and rough distances. If any of you still take the bus, you may know how rough and how bumpy those trips are. So always make sure you keep an eye out and be aware of your surrounding and try to remember what your drone may have or may have not gone through during your trip or during anything that you've done in order to potentially compromise the IMU of your drone. Insert the clip of me crashing it. Oh wait, yeah, I haven't crashed it yet. Luckily, there's ways to keeping your drone and IMU safe. My favorite way is by keeping one of these. This is a Nanook Pelican case and it's incredible for traveling or for overall storage of your drone. Even if you're not planning on traveling for like one or two months, at least you know that your drone is in a safe place and your over $2,000 investment is not gonna get stepped on, kicked or, or even worse dropped. Uh, I'm not affiliated with Nanook, but it is my personal favorite case and if you are interested in checking it out, I have a link to it down below. So the worst thing you can do to your IMU is shake and shock. The third worst thing you can do to your IMU is actually lack of usage. What this means is that if you haven't used your drone in two, three, four months, maybe it's worth your time to do a IMU calibration before you go flying again. Okay, so now you know how... <laughs> Okay, so now you know when to look for signs that your IMU needs calibration, but how do you actually calibrate it? Just before I jump into this and show you guys exactly how to do it, I invite you guys to leave a like to this video and also share this video with your drone friends because we want to lower the amount of flyaways that currently exist in the world. There's some things that you need to keep in mind that are extremely important for this process. You can't just take the drone out and, and put it on a table and start calibrating it. You need to consider a lot of factors like perfectly level surface. In fact, Calibrating the IMU is almost like doing surgery. You're either going to fix the problem or you're going to make it a whole lot worse. That is why it is crucial that you set some time aside and actually treat the IMU calibration like a surgery. But jokes aside, you need the table to be completely leveled. In fact, I suggest you guys download an app called Bubble Level. I'm not affiliated in any way, it just works. It uses the X and Y axis. I'm going to be using my phone, which has these cameras on the back. So in order to fix this issue, I'm actually going to put my finger on the cameras and it's going to lift the phone and make it perfectly parallel to the surface. As you can hear, this is beeping which is saying that the X and Y axes are completely level. So the next step is to actually take your drone out and remove the gimbal clamp and the propellers. Before I go ahead and turn everything on here, you also want to make sure that while it's being calibrated, it's going to take five to 10 minutes. And it's extremely important that you're not walking around the subject or creating wind, creating shake or anything like that because the drone needs to be completely still on a flat surface. And last but not least, make sure that your battery is at least 50%. So now we're all set up and the drone is on and the gimbal is on and I have a live view feed. So what I'm gonna do here is actually close the gimbal back up. 
Okay, so we're all set up and ready to go. I have folded my Mavic back up because that's the way the system is gonna tell you to do it. So if we go in our app here and click on the top right corner of the screen into the menu, then click on the top right drone icon, scroll all the way down, click on advanced settings, then go into the middle of the page and click on sensors, and you're gonna see your accelerometer and your gyroscope. And what we're gonna do here is click on calibrate IMU. And now it's gonna tell you exactly how to do it by following the picture. The picture is showing us to put it on its right side. Okay, that's done already. Now the next side. So yeah guys, it really is that simple. The hardest part is actually understanding what you're doing and why you're doing it, as well as setting up your workstation in order to do it. The actual calibration process itself is extremely easy. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.